this is uh, Biology 223. I am doing Russell um, Genetic Mapping in Eukaryotes Chapter, Chapter 14, Problem 31, backwards, the book. So this is part two of that problem. Um, so we had determined what the parental class were, and then we had determined that there are going to be eight classes, eight groups of, there are going to be, we expect that there are going to be eight groups of, uh, of quadruplets, reciprocal uh, uh, quadruplets, that will equal the 32 different uh, classes of, of progeny, whether, uh, which we see as phenotypes, which represent the genotypes of um, the gametes pre produced by meiosis in the um, mother and the female who meiosis, which has five heterozygous loci and two linkage groups, four and one. So, so the other way I, I show it in class is I'll show you four fingers like this. There are four loci, and so we can have single crossing over, single crossing over, single crossing over, so there's three of those. We can have also double crossing over, double crossing over, double crossing over, so there are three double crossing over and one triple crossing over. And so that's, that's how you can think of it. Um, up to five is relatively easy. So after parental, we expect then if the most frequent class is going to be um, single crossing over uh, between the adjacent loci that have the greatest distance. So single crossing over can occur between B and D, D and A, and A and C. It doesn't make sense to say it's occurring between B and C because it matters whether it occurs here, here, or here. The outcome is different. So it has to be, it's either between B and D, or between D and A, or between A and C. You say, well, what happens if it happens in the locus itself? Well, that's, that's, that's an entirely different subject that we talk about later. So the, the most likely place is between B and T because there are, B and D because there are 5.5 map units and that's greater than the distance between D and A or A and C. So, so it's going to be between B and D. So the, the way to um, approach this um, is covered in a uh, chapter that doesn't exist in this edition. It's in a previous uh, edition and there's a supplement on Moodle PDF of that missing chapter. It's called Advanced Mapping in Eukaryotes. And it covers um, uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which makes a tetrad, an unordered tetrad, and also covers Neurospora, which like Soderia you used in the lab, makes an ordered tetrad. It's an ordered tetrad organism, so it's Ascospore by the order, if you can see the phenotype, or you, if you can determine the phenotype of the spores that are the product of, of of, um, of, um, of meiosis, uh, then, then we can map the centromere. Here we can't map the centromere, but nonetheless, the problems in that chapter and the discussion in that chapter are very useful, and there's a problem on chiasma resolution that is very useful to think about this. So I'm going to show you how I think about this, and you can refer to that video. So let's imagine that the female, that parent here, that is undergoing meiosis. Let's look at the linkage group here. So she has a chromosome that has four loci that each are heterozygous, and we can see the consequences of that. So there's a B plus D, A plus C, and this pair, uh, there's a centimeter somewhere. We don't know where it is, so I can just put it here for convenience. So we'd, don't get confused as to what we're doing, and draw this. So what we're looking at is what happens in her meiosis. And here we expect the most frequent class will be crossing over between B and D, it's 5.5. So crossing over here. So crossing over occurs here. Then when this, this four strand stage is resolved in, um, uh, so after meiosis, two where we have the four, uh, the recombinants will be B plus, so there's, you notice they'll get parental from this, but that's a subject we, are, we would just save for the advanced mapping chapter. So we will have this, the recombination will yield B plus 
T plus A C plus from, and it's reciprocal, which will be here B D A plus C. So that is B D A plus C. And you notice that these two are reciprocal. They're reciprocal, and if they're not, something's wrong. So therefore, along including also locus E, which is um, which is independently assorting the product here of this most frequent uh, uh, single crossing over class will be B plus D plus A C plus E B plus D plus A C plus E plus B D A plus C E B D A plus C E plus and these being the so most frequent single crossing over, these being also 5.5 map units, we expect to see to be 5.5% of the total as a sum, and out of 1,000, that would be 55 out of 1,000, so about 10 or so. And you know from the dice lab that if the expectation is uh, 11, we don't see 11, 11, 11, 12, we something, see something that can vary quite a bit. And I wanted to... Um, bring a couple, bring up a, a couple points here about this. I will never ask you in a calculation to determine precise map units. I will say approximate map units. I discussed this in the video on problem 31. Approximate meaning taking into account only the single crossing over events and, and neglecting the double crossing over. And that's that's for two reasons. Um, actually, I would say for three reasons. One of them, which is we know that unless we have very large numbers, you know this from the dice lab, unless you have a very large number of, of events, those numbers are not very precise. Those numbers cannot be relied upon. Now, granted here, a thousand Drosophila is a lot, but, but um, it might not be enough. How accurate are those numbers? The other is, I wanted to show you here, uh, figure 10 of, in chapter 14 here, there is a, uh, a simple, um, Example: A simple calculation showing that the distant, the, the relative, uh, the, the percent recombination observed compared to the actual map distance is not linear. It's asymptotic. It cannot be that recombination exceeds 50 percent. And so, what happens is, as the two loci are further and further apart, there are more and more likelihood of double crossing over. It. And even numbers of crossing over will look as if it's parental. And of course, if there were an infinite distance, it could only be like independently assorting, which would be 50%. So we have this, which means that when the map distances are great, they're not very accurate. And then the other, the other aspect that's relevant is comes up in Figure B, which is in the in the um, in the problems at the back, showing the relative rate of recombination on X chromosomes through its certain area, and you see that the relative rate varies enormously depending on the particular location of the chromosome, and there's many reasons for this. So, uh, and separately, the organisms have mechanisms to suppress recombination, so we think about interference. So this gets very complicated, and our understanding of what's going on in meiosis is, is, is very sophisticated and the models are quite complicated and beyond the scope of the course here. Um, and even then, it's poorly understood. Um, uh, uh, so, so I don't agree with the emphasis in, uh, you will often see on, on paying attention to double crossing over and calculating map distances. It's, I think it's just kind of silly and it exists because it's a problem that can be asked. So that's uh, that's four, and let's look at um, let's look at the next the next single crossing over. So I have that with my help here. So that was the most frequent, the the middle, the mid uh, frequent uh, single crossing over. Uh, we can calculate the same way, determine the same way. So let's draw the four strand stage. And let's consider the parent with her genotype B, D, 
a plus c, so b plus there, b, d plus a, c plus, and the next most frequent class is going to be recombination between D and A because it's 4.3. So we expect between D and A is going to generate the next most frequent class. And we see here then that we will get B plus D, A, C plus. So we say B plus D, A, C plus, and it's reciprocal, which will be coming from the other strand, B, oops, do I have something wrong here? I'm sorry, I have something miswritten here. It's gonna be a D plus there. So B, D plus, A plus C. So B, D plus, A uh, plus C. B, D plus, A plus D. And I want to make sure I have that written correctly. Yes. So the the class here is going to generate the quadruplet that is B plus D A C plus E B plus D A C plus E plus B D plus A plus C E B D plus A plus C E plus. And those together will sum to approximately 44. 0.3%, which will be 43 out of a thousand. Okay, and then the I'm going to pause here because I'm going to run out of time, and then I'll resume in the next part, and hopefully that will be enough.